In this video, we'll learn how to set up a simple model using GMS and then verify the results of this model using an analytical solution. The model we'll set up assumes a square region with a uh, stream along this side here, uh, no flow boundaries along these sides. The dimensions are given here, the properties, uh, the hydraulic connectivity and recharge here, and the top and bottom elevation of the aquifer are here. And what we'll do is verify the hydraulic heads along this line with an analytical solution. Okay, so now what I want to do is show you how to set up the model in GMS. So we're setting up a grid select the sizes, the number of cells. This is information that's specified in the problem. And we start off with the grid of the proper dimensions. Now we're going to set this model up as a conceptual model. So we start off with a model name we call verify. And then we need the various coverages in the conceptual model. We'll do recharge first. The entire area will be subjected to the same recharge, so we'll use a polygon. I'm going to be sure to build the polygon. Now I'm going to do the hydraulic connectivity. And I'm going to do it by just copying the recharge coverage. It's the same region, the entire region. So I can copy, basically I'm copying the polygon. And I change the name and make sure that I direct the um, attributes to the hydraulic connectivity. Then I'm going to put in the specified head boundary along the right side. Now I need to set up the attributes of the different coverages. So the specified head is going to be a um, constant head boundary. And we specify the hydraulic head at the nodes. The hydraulic conductivity is given in the problem specification. Actually, one thing that I see here that the units of this model are um, the, the default units, feet and days. See right, right there. You can see the feet per day. Um, what we would the the units were given in feet per second, uh, so the time scale should be changed. The results will be okay, uh, but when you set up your models, be sure to go and change the times the, the the time scale to seconds that way the units will be consistent with the units of the parameters that you're given so we map the map the conceptual model to mod flow and check it and then we're going to run it and see how we do. The model runs, and these are the results. Hydraulic head is shown down here uh, next to the F, 68.37. We can compare this to the result from the analytical solution shown here. And using the, pro the values for the parameters in our problem, we get 68.75 for the exact value. So the error is really quite small. Now we can extend this to the profile of hydraulic heads uh, along the line that we were interested in. Do this by selecting hydraulic heads. And here we select 
the uh, column and rows that have the value that we're interested in. So we select uh, from j equals 1 to 50 uh, and in the, uh, in the column f we have the values of the hydraulic head. These can be simply cut and pasted into uh, Excel or some other place that we would want to analyze them. So we put them in Excel and we see this is the column number and the hydraulic head. So that'll give us a starting point. When we do the analysis, we need to multiply the column number by the cell width, which is 50. So in column B, we have the X value. Uh, and column C, the hydraulic head. And column D is the analytical solution for the hydraulic head for this problem. And I've set it up just to make it easy to calculate in Excel. Um, and in column E, we calculate the relative error between the hydraulic head that we calculate numerically and the results of the analytical solution, which we assume is the exact value. So we get these results and we can plot them up, shown here. Uh, the hydraulic head is the line that's curving. The green line is the relative error. And you can see over on the right side where we have the head as a boundary condition, we have a relative error of zero. So this looks pretty good. Um, we now want to extend this analysis to the um, unconfined aquifer. So we need to switch to a convertible aquifer type. And we want to raise the upper elevation and the starting head of the grid. Uh, the reason for this is because for an unconfined aquifer, we want the top of the grid to be above the water table. So we raise it up to 100 and we'll also raise the starting heads up to 100. We go map these results into ModFlow, check them, make sure everything is looking OK, and then go ahead and run it. So it runs and we get another set of heads that are similar but slightly different. You can see the heads here are slightly different than what we had for the confined case. And what we want to do now is to export these data and put them into Excel and compare them to the analytical solution for the hydraulic heads for an unconfined aquifer. Uh, the head profile will be slightly different so we basically repeat what we did for the confined aquifer to verify this case. And if we take a look at the plot of the data, we see that we've got the um, numerical result shown here with symbols and the analytical result shown as a line. That's because the analytical results are a continuous function of x. They are quite similar on this plot. The error is on the order of 10 to the minus 3, which is a tenth of a percent. This is the kind of error that you expect when the difference between the analytical and numerical solution is really just due to a fairly small numerical error. So this result looks good.